Hi everyone, today I'm going to put the spotlight on two terms that are being used a lot interchangeably and often without thinking. And those two terms are Mac architecture and composable commerce. Now I've already done some videos, one of my earliest videos on composable commerce, and I'll leave the link for you in the corner and in the description so you can take a look at them later. My original composable commerce video was done almost a year ago and a lot has happened since then. Now vendors are calling themselves composable, they're calling themselves Mac, or they're calling themselves both. These terms are becoming overused and being used simultaneously because there's still a lot of confusion out there. So let's delve into it a little deeper. Are they the same? Are they different? Are they conflicting or are they complementary? So let's waste no more time. Let's get to it. In my first video, I used the cube that Gartner used to describe the concept of composable commerce. The X axis represents package business components, and these are the functional capabilities that you use to build the e-commerce platform with. These can include things like core commerce, the CMS, the PIM, personalization, and logistics. In fact, you could break it down even further and even split core commerce into things like OMS and the basket. The Y axis can be used to represent the technology stack and Gartner used a three tiered architecture with view and API at the top, data at the bottom and the business logic sandwiched in the middle. Gartner didn't actually define the technology to use. You could in fact use a microservices architecture, Mac architecture, or even an on-premise architecture if that still really floats your boat. And finally, down the Z or Z axis, you can represent the customer journey. And these are all the stages in which the capabilities actually support the final customer experience. Ultimately, think of the PPCs as what you're composing your e-commerce platform from. The tech defines how those components are built or even how you might integrate them together. And the user journey defines where they might be used. In the original report by Gartner, the user experience or customer experience layer sat on top of the cube where all of the PPCs would plug into. I've described Mac architecture and its components many times in many videos. And I'll leave a link for you in the corner and lots of links in the description for you to look at later. But in summary, Mac architecture is a modern approach to building software and systems that takes advantage of the full benefits of distributed cloud computing. It provides agility through the use of microservices and the API approach and gives you the flexibility of headless technology. The principles and tenets of Mac technology are microservices, API first, cloud native and headless. And I'll put some links to videos to each one of those subjects and why they're so important to the Mac architecture approach. Just take a look in the description. But what's really important in this discussion is that Mac actually delivers its Lego bricks as microservices. This means that PBCs are delivered by Mac vendors as a set of microservices. Even if you're developing your own microservices, you're probably using something like domain-driven design, which means that your microservices are oriented around business capabilities. And ultimately, you're building your customer experience apps on top of these microservices. Are you enjoying this video so far? If you are, can you please take a moment, go down and press that like button. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to the simple model we used from Gartner to represent composable commerce. Let's go back to that cube. Now let's take the technical stack and replace it with Mac architecture. We can see that the package business components now become Mac vendors or even sets of microservices. And there's no need to show the three tiered architecture to show those layers because microservices in Mac architecture actually encapsulate all three. And in SaaS, you don't need to know the architecture under the hood because actually you're buying or renting a service. And finally, Mac is headless, so therefore it neatly fits into that paradigm where we can plug in the package business components directly into the customer experience layer. In summary, composable commerce is a conceptual approach for 
building and constructing e-commerce experiences. It's based on a model for combining packaged business components that consider the elements of the technology stack, the UX, and the business. Mac Architecture, however, is a purely technical approach for building software and systems on a distributed cloud environment. It uses the architectural approaches of microservices and APIs to ensure that it's modular and flexible, and it gives the business far more agility in development. Mac Architecture is geared to deliver the goals of composable commerce, but technically it's not the only way. In reality, being composable in the short term means having a mix of architectures as you start to move away from a monolith to a more modern architecture like Mac architecture. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe and press that like button. But for now, it's time to say thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.